Hey there, VA Consulting Pro viewers. Welcome back to another exciting episode of our Azure Fundamentals series. I'm Ajay Kumar and today we are diving into our episode number 10 titled Features and Tools in Azure for Governance and Compliance. In this episode, we will exploring some powerful features and tools that can help you manage your Azure environment effectively and ensure compliance with corporate or regularity requirements. Before we jump in, let's take a quick look at what you can expect to learn today. First of all, we will discuss the purpose and functionality of Microsoft Purview. Secondly, we will have a look at Azure policy and how it can help you maintain compliance. After that, we will uncover the significance of resources logs in Microsoft Azure. And finally, we will check out the service trust portal. So grab your notepads and let's get started. Alright folks, let's kick things off with Microsoft Purview. So what is it and why is it important? Well, Microsoft Purview is a suite of data governance, risk and compliance solutions designed to give you a unified view of your data. Whether your data resides on-premises, in multiple clouds, or in software as a service applications, Microsoft Preview has got you covered. With Microsoft Preview, you can automate discovery, classify sensitive data, track data lineage end-to-end. -end. Now, it is divided into two primary solution areas. Number one, risk and compliance where it uses Microsoft 365 services to manage and monitor your data. This helps protect sensitive data, identify risk, and meet regulatory compliance requirements. Number two, unified data governance. Purview offers robust solutions for managing data across various environments, including Azure, SQL, and even other clouds like Amazon S3. It creates an up-to-date map of your data state identifies sensitive data and provides secure access to valuable information. Now we are going to move to our next topic that is Azure policy. How do you ensure that your Azure resources stay compliant with corporate standards? Well, that's where Azure policy comes into play. Azure policy allows you to create, assign and manage policies that control or audit your resources. These policies enforce rules to ensure your resource configurations stay in line with your organization's standards. You can define individual policies or group of related policies called initiatives. Azure policy evaluates your resources and highlights non-compliance. It can even prevent the creation of non-compliant resources for you. Policies can be set at different levels, like resource level, resource group level, or subscription level. They are inherited, so setting a policy at a high level applies it to all related resources. Now you should remember that Azure policy comes with built-in policies for storage, networking, compute, security center, and monitoring. It can automatically remediate non-compliant resources. Additionally, there are Azure policy initiatives that group related policies together for larger compliance goals. These can be incredibly handy for monitoring and managing complex environments. Now, let's tackle the importance of resources logs in Microsoft Azure. Logs is a wonderful feature in Microsoft Azure that is gonna prevent you to either delete or create unnecessary resources. So, Actually, how do you prevent critical cloud resources from accidental deletion or maybe some changes? Well guys, resource logs provides a safety net. Even with Microsoft Azure role-based access control policies in place, or we can also call it RBAC policies, resource logs ensure that authorized users can't accidentally delete or modify resources. In general, there are two types of resource logs in Microsoft Azure. That means delete and read only. Delete prevents deletion but allows modification. That means you cannot delete a resource but you can modify it. While read only restricts all users to read only access only. That means you cannot create any other resource inside any other resource. 
You can manage resource log through the Azure portal, PowerShell, Azure CLI or resource manager templates. Now you can see that I'm on my Azure portal. Over here you can create any of the resources. For example, we are going to work with a storage account. I have already created one storage account as well. So if you are new over here, as I mentioned previously, you can search over here, for example, storage account or any other resource that you would like to create. Please search it over here and simply click on this. As you can see that I have already two storage accounts, but if you would like to create a new one, you can create over here. So click on create. Here you have to select certain options and fill certain details and you can create your resource. Over here, I'm going to just select my resource group, which is going to be my BCP demo. And over here, I'm going to give it a name. Demo underscore locks underscore BBI. Let's say like this. Over here, it's saying that the field can contain only lowercase letters and numbers. That means I cannot use underscore over here. So let me delete it. Now, then you can select the rest of the options, redundancy, etc. But that's not the point over here. We have to directly click on this review and we have to create a resource over here. So let's create it. The main purpose of this demo is to show you how the logs works over here. As you can see that my deployment has been succeeded and I can go to my resource now. So this is my resource. And over here, you will find the different options on your left hand side panel where you can see the container, you can see overview and other things over here. Now we have to find the logs. And over here under the settings, you can see there's a lock. So once you're going to come here, just click on this. And here you can add the lock for this particular resource. I'm going to click on add and I'm going to give it a name read. And here you can see that lock type read only and delete. As I mentioned previously, there are two kinds of lock only. Either you can do just read only or delete. So we are going to say read only. And I'm going to write some description over here. This lock prevents any change. Click on OK. And now we have a lock over here. So what it's going to do? Well, when I'm into my storage account and I would like to create any more containers inside this storage account, then this is going to prevent that because this lock is saying you can just read only on this storage account. You cannot make any other changes. So let's try to create a container and see what the error message is coming over here. So I'm here. I would like to say, hey, I would like to create a new container with the name BCP container. And here it's again saying, OK, you can see only this letter. And now I would try to create it. So as soon as I hit this create button, it should show me one error message. So let's see. And here you can see clearly that failed to create storage container. And this is because of the lock itself. Now, what I can show you, I'm going to go back to my lock, which is over here, and I'm going to delete it from there. So let it get load and refresh and here is my lock. So just delete this one. So now there is no lock. And now I will go back again and try to create a container again. So let's do that. Container. And here I am going to create it. And now you can see that I have successfully created the container. So read only is going to prevent you to make any of the changes over here. Now since we have created this container, now I am going to put another lock. And this time I'm going to put delete one so that no one can delete this container over here. Right now, I'll just come here and I can delete it from here. But I want to put a lock first. So let's go there again. And I'm going to say, hey, delete lock. So no one can delete this container. Delete and OK. So now you can see that I have this lock. So let's refresh. So we have only one lock, which is saying delete. And now we are going to go back to my container. I'm going to select this and let me try to delete it. So it's going to say that, okay, containers which are in a leased state are locked for deletion and will be skipped. So that's okay. So let's try still. Attempt to override of delete lock. So let's see if it can do, but you can also uncheck this, but let's see. As you can see that, again, you are going to get this message over here that you cannot delete this one. Now, again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete my delete lock over here. So let's say I'm going to click on this delete and there should be no more lock. Now I'm going to go to my container and I'm going to delete this one this time and it should get delete successfully. So delete. It's not deleting somehow, but we have to do, try it again because there is no lock now. So it should get delete. 
So let's try to delete. And you can see that I have successfully deleted the container that I created. So this was the demo about logs in Microsoft Azure where you can prevent to make any of the changes or accidentally deletion of the resources. Always try to use the logs whenever you are creating any of the resources which are critical for the business. All right. Now, last but not least, let's explore the service storage portal. What is it and why should you care? Well, guys, the Microsoft Service Trust Portal is a treasure trove of information related to Microsoft security, privacy, and compliance practices. Here is what you can find on the portal. You can get the quick access, easily return to the portal's homepage. You can get My Library, where you can save and access documents you need to quickly. And also you get All Documents section, which is a central place for all portal documents. If you would like to access the Trust Portal, then you have to simply go on this URL, which is servicetrust.microsoft.com. Over here, you are going to get all the documents, as I said. You would get all the certifications related to Microsoft Azure, which is going to help you to trust the services provided by the Microsoft, whether they are trustworthy or not. Here you are going to get all the certifications that Microsoft Azure has. And on the top, you are going to get all documents. You can get your My Download History, My Library and Service Trust Portal itself, where you are going to see all these certifications, etc. that Microsoft Azure already acquired. And now that's a wrap of today's episode of Azure Fundamentals. We hope you found this dive into Azure governance and compliance tools enlightening. Remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with our BI Consulting Pro series. Also, please don't forget to contact us for any of the trainings that you require, whether it's Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric or Microsoft Azure. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, keep exploring the world of Azure and we will see you in the next video.